chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee, for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Last evening, I took to kneeling on this floor in recognition, first of all, of the glory of this nation, the pride that I have in representing the nation in faraway places as a member of Congress and visiting heads of states and visiting with the people of other countries who have such an admiration for the purity of our freedom. I also take great pride in Texas being a state that is home to any number of military bases and reservists and active duty and veterans. We interact all the time. My military liaison in my office is a veteran of the Iraq and Afghan wars. So there is no lacking in sense of pride and not one of us remembers missing the national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance as children growing up in our daily activities as we went to school. But I also have come to understand what those symbols mean. They're not just cloth or music. They, in fact, represent ideals and values, and many people interpret them in a different way. I abhor spitting or burning or destroying of the flag. I've not done any of those. But Colin Kaepernick's kneeing in the early months past was no disrespect of his love of this country, but a recognition that people were hurting and people were losing their lives, and we needed to reform systems of justice to be able to respond to the grieving mothers who lost children in many instances, I would say all the instances that we can recall of the recent two years unnecessarily. Did not mean that we did not have, again, the greatest respect for our men and women in blue. I'll take no back seat to my honor I'm fighting for them working alongside of them during Hurricane Harvey, thanking them for the first responders and the enormous work they did, working alongside of them as we rescued a group of individuals in a church that had fled for their lives during Hurricane Harvey. But we must understand each other as people, and it is unfortunate that the Commander-in-Chief has taken to a distraction that wants to peel away our unity and reporting the news. They like it, don't they? He's really working for his base. I don't know anything about a base. I know about Americans. I see them all the time, and they don't look like me, and they disagree with me. They have different opinions. I still respect that opinion. But I do believe that we can all come together. So that knee was in respect of Colin, the young man who have now successively taken to their knee, the owners, Yes, I know that what they've done does not feed people, does not work on your retirement, does not get us something better than the Graham-Cassidy bill, which will destroy and undermine health care for millions of Americans. Those are pre-existing diseases and those who, who suffer uh, from uh, the lack of income and those who need good health care. The very promise that was made by the president and all of us as members of Congress that there should be some uh, structure. There is no structure than Graham Ken Kennedy uh, Cassidy bill. All it does is throw it over to the state. If you don't have the money, forget about it. Don't worry about them and take the money and give tax cuts to the rich. That's not the American way. So I rise today to say I remain on a bended knee in spirit with all of those young men. I look forward to working with the NFL and all the sports uh, as we explain that these young men are vital parts of the community. Thank you uh, to J.J. Watts and the Texans and all of those who have contributed. So now what is the most important message? My people are suffering, my constituents still uh, in Texas. They're suffering in Florida. They're suffering now extraordinarily in the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Your eyes should burn, your heart should be struck by the absolute humanitarian crisis in Puerto Rico. And as I listened to my colleagues this morning, as I was coming to this floor already on these issues, they pierced my heart even more because Puerto Rico is underwater. The disease is rising. People with medicine are losing it because they do not have refrigeration. 
and yet the idle talk and idle hands of the administration are in fact not doing anything sufficient enough to save those lives. And I too have people in my district who are unhoused, but I'm here because we are unified and we must be able to speak about the whole of America. I've been to Puerto Rico on a number of issues. I know the leadership, the former congressperson, and I believe that it is high time, if this is water that Hurricane Harvey was, imagine the disease of being hit by 155 miles per hour. It is now time to put a military czar in a Puerto Rico, has send expired. the C-130s, send the ships, help these people be rescued. This is a disgrace. Stop talking about foolishness. Be a leader and be the commander in chief and stop all of this. When are we going to get the kind General of leader that is deserving of expired. the American people? I am sick and tired of it. I want a president. The I General, do not want General a lady is no longer recognized. Members are reminded to refrain from engaging in personalities toward the president. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I cannot believe what I heard on this floor. Kneeling as a sign of respect. I don't recall my Democratic colleagues kneeling when former President Obama would come to address this body. They stood as a sign of respect. That's what we do in this country, Republicans and Democrats, for our flag, for our anthem. And that's why I joined so many Americans in anger and disgust when I saw NFL players, multimillionaires, kneeling during the national anthem. And it's such an overgeneralized indictment. If people have a problem with police brutality or the criminal justice system, there are venues for discussion, even for protest, that highlight and isolate those issues for an adult and responsible discussion. But when people kneel during our national anthem, they don't simply indict the issue with which they take some particular grievance. They indict our country, our service members, our first responders, our founding fathers, and the principles that made this country great. But see, this freedom that we enjoy it also includes the freedom of speech, the right of our citizens to express themselves, even we, when we find that expression offensive, is a fundamental constitutional right. Yet nowhere in the Constitution does it say that hardworking Americans have to subsidize or create special carve-outs and exemptions for conduct that they find unpatriotic. Unfortunately, today, the tax code gives special breaks to sports leagues, some swamp creature of yesteryear cleverly defined sports leagues as tax-exempt trade organizations. The public pays 70% of the cost of NFL stadiums. Tax-exempt sports leagues generate nearly $2 billion in revenue. And yet the tax code gives them special treatment, gives them a special break that small businesses in my district don't get. That's unfair. And it's outrageous that we take money away from hardworking Americans to subsidize professional sports at all. Return on investment is negative. And I've heard these arguments in my home state of Florida. Oh, these sports clubs create jobs and revenue and economic activity. Look, every economic analysis showed that this is a negative return on investment, a loser for taxpayers, and corporate welfare at its worst. The Internal Revenue Code must be amended to remove the tax-exempt status for professional sports leagues permanently. I'm glad that the NFL voluntarily gave up their status, but we should make this change permanent and we should make it the law. In the coming days and weeks, we will be discussing tax relief to lift up the middle class. I support whole-scale, bold, conservative tax reform, but we have an opportunity in this tax bill to send an even more profound message that in America, if you want to play sports, you're free to do so. You're also free to protest. You're welcome to do both. But you should do it on your own time and on your own dime. I yield back.